Welcome to the Fiji Symposium 2019 here in Cairo, Egypt, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Barbara Iyayi, who is the Chief Growth Officer, uh, Managing Director of Africa uh, for Element. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, Barbara, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about Element and, uh, and also what brings you here to this symposium. Sure. Element is an AI company that deploys mobile biometric software. So we deploy these, this software to help um, our partners all over the world identify customers um, in different sectors, banking, telecom, healthcare, we work with governments. I'm here because I want to talk about digital financial services and how our software is helping to revolutionize that right now. Now, an unintended consequence of a digital finance-led financial inclusion program is that it can lead to greater financial data inclusion, but not necessarily increased financial inclusion. I wanted to ask you if you agree with this statement. Absolutely. I think there's a difference between you know, uh, helping people actually obtain financial services and, you know, having a lot of data about, about people and not, not using it in a way that gives people financial services. I think one of the important thing, things to lift people out of poverty is to create products and services that make sense for them. Um, digital identity, which is really what the core of Element is about, is really to help partners, banks, um, anybody providing financial services to understand who that customer is and be able to provide products and services that make sense for them. That is truly financial inclusion in, in terms of giving people the opportunity to not just get affordable financial services, but get good quality financial services in an efficient way that makes sense for them. So what's the current landscape at the moment for, for digital identity? D digital identity takes a whole variety of spectrums. Um, you can you can go you can think about digital identity in terms of a digital track record of a, of a of a individual. What Element focuses on is biometrics. Um, we we use machine learning techniques to create the digital abstraction of a person's biometrics, whether it's their face, their palm, their fingerprints. And biometrics is truly the more secure form of understanding who that customer is. So this digital abstraction is is really revolutionary because it allows you to create a digital ID of that person using their biometrics. And that digital ID unlocks opportunities, financial services opportunities, in a digital way for the customer. And are there pe things that people should be worried about? You know, the biggest thing with, with biometrics is privacy um, and security. And we are, um, we are in the forefront of that as a, as a, as a, as a population, as a, as a, as a global um, as, as it's a global threat. This is not something that's just about biometrics. This is about, about people's data in general in digital platforms. So biometrics needs to be part of that conversation. You know, how are we making sure people's data stays private? And how are we making sure, you know, there is true security from end-to-end -end perspective, from how you deploy the servers and systems to what the customer sees. Um, and, and part of what we do in Element is really to solve that problem for a lot of our partners. Okay, let's talk about the fintech sector. How do you see the fintech sector uh, reshaping digital financial services? You know, I'm very bold about fintech and I actually think some bold things are going to happen. Um, as, you know, fintech really um, came about because of cloud computing, because of open source technology. The barriers to entry to set up a fintech company is very low. Um, so what I think is going to happen is, you know, payments and cost of transactions are just going to get to zero um, because the fintech company's goal is to keep that digital customer in their platform to continue to transact. So the more they can do that in a cheap way for the customer, the better. Data is also going to be a very important part of a fintech company in terms of shaping digital financial services. That data is actually going to unlock a lot of opportunities and it's going to make a very... Um, it's going to create a lot of interesting opportunities for the, for the customer. But my, my vision and my, my, my personal opinion is that we need to figure out a way to marry traditional financial services with fintech. Because until we really do that, the low-income consumer wouldn't be able to really lift themselves out of poverty. They still need mortgages. They still need car loans. That's really what's going to take them out. And we need to sort of bring those two worlds together. And finally, what role can governments play, do you think, uh, to enhance the usage of digital financial services at national level? As I mentioned, digital identity is the foundation of a digital ecosystem. And I think governments can be bold in terms of creating digital databases, whether it's on a foundational level or on a functional level. A national ID system that's digital and has an API that, the, that companies in the, in, and, and government services 
in the country can access in a digital way. Functional databases, so if you're a banking system or you're a healthcare system that serves that specific sector, but it brings that industry together to serve the banking world, to serve the healthcare world. If governments do that, that really can revolutionize that digital um, ecosystem. Suddenly you can start seeing more digital players coming in and doing what banks should be doing, what healthcare companies should be doing, and just providing better opportunities for their citizens. Well, Barbara, thank you very much for joining us in the studio today, and we hopefully will catch up with you again some stage in the future. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great. Thanks a lot. <laughs>